Good evening, traders. Zach here with the Trading Network. Hope you guys are doing well and that your week is off to a good start. It is June 1st, Tuesday, June 1st to be precise, and I have another daily market profile recap for you for both the ES and the NQ futures markets. So let us dive right in here. We will switch on over to the profile. So starting first and foremost, we will dive right into ES and go over the key levels. Clear off all my drawings here. And for those of you guys who uh, watched my weekly forecast video, you can see that we uh, are still right in range and we will get into more details about that. So first and foremost, the key levels that I was looking at for ES was the overnight high. Overnight high was 42.28.25. Uh, the next level to the downside I was looking at was 42.17.50. That was the overnight high from the May 28th session. You can see that right here. Uh, third key level was the 42.10 level. 42.10, yet another overnight high. That was from the May 30th into May 31st Globex session. Fourth key level was the overnight low from this most recent session at 41.95. That also coincided with the POC from our very small session half day uh, yesterday. And you can see that there was some other confluence there from regular trading hour lows from the, let's see, that was the May 27th session there. Uh, so right below that, last but not least, I was looking at that 41.91 level, and that was the point of control from the May 26th session, which was right over here. So switching over to NQ, I will toggle my drawings, pull my key levels up, and we will dig right in. Key levels on NQ, overnight high, first and foremost as well, just like ES, 13.756. Second level was the point of control from the 28th session. That was the 13.723 level. You can see that right here. And that was indeed a naked POC until we tapped that today. Third level was the value area low from May 28th. That was the 13.698 level. 13,698 was down here. Once again, that's the value area low. And for those of you guys new to the profile, new to the channel, welcome first and foremost. And if you guys are not familiar with what the value area is, the value area is where 70% of the trading hour or the trading's activity took place in that session. So just to reiterate, the value area is where a large majority of the price action took place. So you can see here, my value areas are highlighted. You can see the, uh, the so you can see here, my value areas are highlighted and then outside of value is shaded a little darker. So that's just a quick visual tool or a quick reference on how we can see value as well. If I zoom out, you can see that here's today's value area between 13.623 and value area high 13.691. So that is just a side note for those of you who are new to the channel and new to learning about market profile. Now, uh, we will get into the rest of the key levels, moving into the uh, fourth level, that was the overnight low, 13,670. And last but not least, I was looking at the May 27th range low at 13,644, and that was right over here. So scrolling down a little bit, we will go ahead and get into the pre-market market profile analysis. I will flip back over to the session profile on ES, and we will dig right in, starting with the overnight inventory. Overnight inventory was long on ES and NQ at the time of writing. And you can see here that settlement was right here on ES 420250 ish. And on NQ, settlement was, let's see, I think that was 13686. Okay. So you can see a majority of the overnight price action was indeed above settlement. And you know that when a majority of price action is above settlement, well, then the overnight inventory is indeed long. So when the overnight inventory is long, we are looking for a higher probability, typically, for overnight inventory to get faded. So if overnight inventory is long, the higher probability is indeed for New York to fade the overnight. But there are other key factors that we need to take into consideration, like how we are opening in relation to that previous market profile or that previous regular trading hours profile. So you can see that in my trade plan here, I say that at the time of writing, we are looking to open above range in value on ES and NQ compared to yesterday's half day and inside range, but above value from Friday. This means that the profile is showing that there has indeed been at least a slight change in sentiment since the last regular trading hour session. And I was looking at Friday's 
regular trading hour session as opposed to Mondays because Monday we only were trading for a couple of hours. So not a lot of you know, not a lot of business done here. You can see only 31, 32,000 contracts, and we had less than a nine point range. So um, this means again that the profile is showing that there was at least a slight change in sentiment with us being above the highs from last week, right? So when we opened up or when I came to write my analysis, we were all the way up here, right? So that is a bit of directional conviction. Now, with that said, since we are operating close to the highs from Friday on both indices, flip over to NQ, you can see the same thing. So the overnight profile actually did not get above the highs or get above the weekly highs, I will say on NQ, uh, but we did actually make new highs right upon the open, which was pushed swiftly down in the initial balance. So today I was looking at the overnight highs at 13,756 and 4228 on NQ and ES respectively as the line in the sand levels. So for those of you guys, once again, new to the page, my line in the sand levels are essentially the levels that I choose each day to say, okay, if ES and NQ move and hold above these levels, well, we are very likely to see upside directional conviction develop, or we are very likely to see the bulls hold strength to that upside structure. And on the downside, if we move and hold below the line in the sand levels, well, typically that is going to get us downside pressure, a lot of times downside directional conviction or back into previous value areas, things like that, if we have you know profiles that are recent, relevant, and lower. So that's something to keep in mind. Very, very important part of using the profile analysis, in my opinion. So if both indices could move and hold above the overnight highs, I was looking for an upside trend continuation. However, if we could not move and hold above the line in the sand levels, I was looking for a move back into Friday's profile, likely ranging price action, which we actually did not get until after the initial balance, after that first hour, right? We did indeed have the ranging price action, but it took a little bit. It took after you know the first hour of PA. So you guys can see here, this green part of the profile, this is the initial balance. So this is the opening one hour range. So this is the bottom of the one hour range. This is the top of the opening one hour range for New York session. So we did not basically start bracketing between these previously known levels until after that initial balance developed. So getting back into the trade plan here, I would just to reiterate, if we could not hold those line in the sand levels, I was looking for a move back into Friday's value, which indeed we got, and we actually moved below Friday's value. So because we broke the highs last week, I would consider moving back into range, or I was considering moving back into range, a change in behavior, and I would look back into playing the range until 41.70 breaks to the downside or 42.30 breaks to the upside. So that is still what I am looking at moving into tomorrow, just you know, to give you guys an idea, we're back in range, right? We did not break out. This was essentially a probe above the overnight highs. The other time frame players were not having any buying above the overnight high, and we got a very, very swift selling tail. So you can see we had the open test drive to the downside on ES, and that is one of the highest directional conviction profile types that exists. If you guys want to learn more about the open test drive or a bunch of different profile types, I would highly suggest reading the book Mind Over Markets by Jim Dalton. That is, uh, it's basically what I call the market profile Bible. You guys will get a lot of really great information, learning the different profile types, learning the relationship between the new profiles open compared to the previous profile if you will, which I have mentioned uh, briefly in this video as well. So I just wanted to point that out. We have the open here, we have the test above the highs, the other time frame players were not interested in buying above the highs. We got swift selling pressure and we operated for most of the session right down here. Again, you can see that value area. This is where 70% of the business was done today. And that was in essentially an 11 point range, very, very tight range today, even though uh, you know we had some more volume come in. Just to reiterate the end of the analysis here, uh, I was considering that moving back into range, a change of behavior and a breakout invalid if we did indeed move back into last week's range. And that's where we are. So we must take it one level at a time. Just like I said in my weekly forecast, I'm looking at this 4210 level as kind of our 
mid-level of the range, and I want to see us move and hold above 42.17, of course, and now 42.30 is going to be a very important level. As you can see, we revisited these highs, 42.32, 42.31. These were our previous highs, previous all-time highs in the regular trading hour session, and this is going to be the level to beat, if you will, on ES. So going over to NQ, you can see it was a fairly similar story. Uh, NQ, we had a massive range today compared to what we had all of last week. We actually ran through the entire last week's range in basically like the first two hours. So you can see the initial balance right here on NQ. Here's the bottom of the opening one hour range. Here's the top, right? And let's see what periods these e and f so yeah basically first two two and a half hours we ran through the entire last week's range and basically made new lows other than the 24th session so just to reiterate this profile open type once again and how important these are you can see that if i zoom in here we got an open test drive on es i'm sorry nq as well so here's the open that's o period right there i'll zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see so we open we probed up once again, just like ES, we probed the overnight highs. Other time frame players were not having any of it. They were not interested in buying. We got swift single print selling tail, which means that price did not spend any time there, essentially, and got swiftly pushed down. And when you see that, you know that there is directional conviction very likely on the horizon. And that is indeed what we got once again until after the initial balance formulated and we begin to range towards the lows of last week's sessions. So scrolling down into the scenarios here, just to reiterate, upon open, I was looking to see if we could get acceptance above the overnight highs, 42.28 on ES and 13.756 on NQ. We did not very clearly, as you guys can see in the profile. Now, if we could hold those levels, you guys know the story. I was looking for that upside trend continuation of new highs. And if we couldn't, well, that is exactly what happened today. We moved back down through Friday's range and into the lows on NQ uh, or, or into last week's lows on NQ, if you will, and into or close to last week's lows on ES. Now, again, this 70, you know, high 70s, low 80 level, that's going to be another line in the sand. You can see here we have, I discussed this in my forecast, but I just want to mention it again. Previous highs turn to lows, right? We need to hold this to remain or to hold our bullish structure. If we hold the 90s as our lows, I mean, that's even more bullish because we're making higher lows. So that's just something that I wanted to point out again. As the last bullet point here says, we are indeed back in last week's range and we must take it one level at a time to escape that range once again. So moving into the targets here. 42.28, line in the sand level on NQ. 42.28, boom. This is going to be short and sweet because you guys can see we did not get any moves to the upside. We got within one point of our upside target, which was the prior high right here, 42.31. We didn't get it. You know, we, we did not get enough bullish pressure to move even three points above our overnight high. That is very, very telling. When you see a reaction like that, when you see price probe above the overnight high, for instance, and get quick, swift, strong selling pressure, that's something that you can say, okay, well, this is an open test drive. This is a high directional conviction profile open type, and I can take high probability trade opportunity from that. So that's something that I want you guys to keep in mind. And again, really would suggest uh, looking into Jim Dalton's teachings to, to learn more about this stuff if you want to get very granular with you know, what the profile is and how it works. So 42.28, we got no upside targets hit. So moving into the downside targets, starting with 42.17, you can see we got that hit in the initial balance. That was the overnight high from the 27th into 28th session. Just below that, at 42.09, we had the POC from the May 28th regular trading hour session. That was hit as well. That was a naked point of control that was filled today. That was indeed hit in the initial balance, which is the opening one hour of the New York session. And the third downside target was 42.02. 42.02 was actually quite a few levels. We had a POC from the 27th regular trading hour session. We had the prior initial balance low right here. And we also had settlement price at 42.02.50.
So three major levels there. When you see multiple profile levels stack up like that, just keep in mind that's a really, really high probability area and you're very likely gonna see a reaction there. So for the final two downside targets, 4195, 4195, zooming out a little bit. You can see we had a lot of confluence there as well. Uh, that ended up being the low from today. That was also the overnight low. That was also the POC from yesterday's small session. 4196 was the prior overnight low. 4194.25 was also the regular trading hours low from the 27th. So a lot of confluence there for a target. And last but not least, I was looking at 4190, which had some more confluence as the low from our small half day. We also had point of control from the May 25th session, 4192, again, May 26th, POC, 4189, the value area low, 4188, the overnight low from the May 25th session. So you can see we have a ton of profile levels stacking up there. And what do you know? That's the current low for the Globex session. That was the low for Monday. And again, just stacking up more confluence there to really show us if 4190 breaks, well then, you know, maybe, uh, Maybe the bottom falls out a little bit and we get that flush down into, you know, these highs. And by bottom falling out, obviously not uh, too big of a move, but this is going to be, you know, the next important area to get through. And below that, I'm looking at, you know, 50s, something like that. So just to be clear here, final downside target on ES did not get hit. We got within five points of it, uh, but we moved through 4217, 4209, 4202, and 4195. So a lot of good opportunity on the short side off the open, and honestly, a lot of good opportunity on both sides when we started to range. So even though we didn't get upside targets hit, to be fair, you know, you could have taken long trades off of the overnight low and scalped around and taken some profit, you know, at these previous profile levels as well. So something to consider. Now for my NASDAQ fam, let's move into the NQ futures. Starting with the line in the sand was 13,756, just like ES, the overnight high there. And on NQ, we did not get any upside targets hit either, right? So short and sweet. To the downside, our first target was 13,739. 13,739 was the initial balance high, also very close to the value area high from our May 28th regular trading hour session. Uh, the second downside target was 13,723. 13,723 is that glaring naked POC that we had today. Uh, that I'm sorry, the glaring naked POC that we closed today from that same May 28th session. Uh, the third downside target was 13,688. 13,688 was a little ways down there. You can see this was the overnight POC right here from the most recent Globex session. And the second to last downside target was uh, just a little bit below that at 13,670. 13,670 was indeed hit and that was the overnight low. You can also see we had the POC from our half day there. You can see we had the 13,657 level as the prior overnight low, 662. So some good confluence in that area as well. And that was our second to last downside target. Once again, the overnight low. Last downside target, 13,657. And that was just that level that I pointed out a few seconds ago. That was the overnight low from the May 30th into May 31st session. So we did indeed move uh, quite a ways below that level right there. We got into the overnight lows from the 26th and the 22nd and the regular trading hours low and value area high from the 24th and 25th regular trading hour session. So again, on NQ, uh, a lot more volatility and some good expansion, which is you know, to be expected after prices coiling up so much, which is what I was referring to in my weekly forecast. You know, when we have price coiling up, typically, you know, it is just adding fuel to the fire. It is absorbing liquidity. It is building up that strength for the expansion, right? And as you can see, we expanded and we really retracted right back into range. So it will be very interesting to see what kind of resolution we actually get from this area. Are we going to break below and hold below and move, you know, back into 13 fives and lower? Or was, you know, this just kind of a, a liquidity grab or an absorption event, if you will, for a move back up to our new highs? To be determined. 
All I know is that when we have the profile, it doesn't really matter what direction price moves in because with these tools on a daily basis, we have high probability trade opportunity and high probability trade areas to look for that opportunity at. Right? We can use the profile opens, we can use the open type, we can use the relation from today's profile to you know yesterday's regular trading hours profile, things like that. And we can, on a daily basis, regardless of trend, range, we can have high probability opportunity based on this information, as long as we are in the right frame of mind to interpret it. And that is the big if, and that's really one of the most difficult things of trading. You know, You can have a trade plan, but can you keep yourself in the flow state to follow that plan on a daily basis or on a consistent basis? That's, that's something to consider and uh, goes without saying that is certainly something to focus on and to work on throughout your entire journey as a trader. So I hope this information is serving you guys well. I hope you're enjoying learning more about the market profile and how I use this stuff on a daily basis to give me that high probability trade opportunity that I refer to so much. If you guys do enjoy what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe down below and leave a comment and let me know what you think. It really does make a difference and I immensely appreciate it. If you guys want to learn more about what we do here at the Trading Network, check out those links in the description below where you can first and foremost find a link to our free Facebook group where I release these trade plans on a daily basis for free in our Facebook group every day at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, of course. And you can also check out our website down below, thetradingnetwork.io, where you can learn more about one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me. I offer four-week programs, 10-week programs. These are individual, personalized trading programs. I work with traders on a daily basis. We have our Zoom sessions. I show you my strategies, my mindset techniques. I help you hone in on your edge and become the consistently profitable trader that you are striving to be. In addition to my mentorship programs, you can also check out information on joining the private discord server where you can watch me trade live on a daily basis monday through friday again at 9 30 a.m eastern that is new york open you can also purchase access to the trading network proprietary indicator package as well as the trading network fundamentals of futures trading course the fundamentals of futures trading course is a comprehensive course that discusses varying strategies for multiple market conditions what that means is from a to z i give you guys a recipe to follow for a trending strategy and a ranging strategy. It's very, very important that traders have multiple plays for different market environments. Last but not least, you guys can also purchase the FFT bundles, which include lifetime discord access, the trading network proprietary indicator package, and of course, the fundamentals of futures trading course. We offer payment plans and a few different packages to make it easier on the wallet as well. If you guys have any questions about anything I mentioned, if you have any, we even offer, even with payment plans and a few varying bundles to make it easier on your wallet as well. If you guys have any questions about any of the products I mentioned, if you have any questions about any of the market profile analysis that I've mentioned and talked about in this video, please feel free again to leave a comment. Feel free to reach out any way you can, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, shoot me an email, info at the trading network.io, and I will get back to you guys ASAP and I will help you any way that I can. Thank you very much for being a part of the trading network, and I will see you guys in the next video.